In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own multiple subject assessment data trackers for each of your students. It's very important that you are monitoring their progress throughout the year and whatever subject you teach. And in order to know where they're going, you have to know where they got started. Now, this is something that you can keep track of yourself in your own data binder, or you can share it with your students so that they can track their progress throughout the year. You can share it with parents by sending it home for them to review, review it with their child or share it during a parent-teacher conference. Also, you can share it with your resource team or your administration to show what's going on with your students at that specific point in the school year. Let's look at some examples of what you can actually create here in Google Slides. So I have this main one where you can track um, 10 assessments during the year. This is by number or if you teach August to May and you want to track it that way or if you teach September to June and you want to track it that way. Maybe your students um, only take four assessments throughout the year quarterly, or even if they do like three tests, if it's like a diagnostic test and you want to track it there as well, you can do that. There's, you can leave it blank if you want to write on it, or if you want to do just one subject on a page and have it all written out, you can adjust it based on what you want. So I'm just showing you the basics of how to set it all up and then you can adjust it based on what goes on in your classroom and what goes on at your school. So let's get started by adding in a blank slide. We're going to go to the plus sign up here. I have my notes next to me so I can keep track of what we're doing in what order. So we're going to start out by adding in a rectangle. So you're going to go up to the shapes tab and click on a rectangle. I'm going to be zooming in and out a lot just to make sure certain things need to be precise, certain things don't. So get your rectangle how you want it. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color to black just to make that line pop out. And then you can um, move it up and down to make sure it's centered. Next, we're going to add in lines. So like the lines here, we're going to add in intersecting lines here and then a line to go at the top for our heading. So we're going to go back up to the tab here and go to line and click on line. Then I'm going to do one here for the heading and then let's change that make sure it's black and then I'm going to let's zoom in now so we can make sure it's all the way on the edge so we see here it's a little bit short so I'm going to zoom in even or I'm going to um, extend that line and then go to the other side and shorten it here, decrease it on this side. All right, that works. Let's zoom back out. So I'm going to take that line and I'm going to hit Command D on my keyboard. You can hit Control D if you have a PC. I'm just going to bring it down here. You want to make sure the top and bottom sections are about the same. All right, so now click back on that line and hit Command D again. And we're just going to change the direction of the line so that we have our vertical line going up and down the page. So I'm going to make sure it's straight by clicking on that purple dot up there. But then I'm going to bring it down because I don't want that partition in the heading section. So I'm going to zoom in, bring this down, and make sure it's lined up. All right, that's good for me. Let's zoom back out. Okay, so there's our setup. So next we're going to be adding in our tables. So just to double check that those lines are all black. Okay, great. So now we're going to go up to the ribbon and click on insert, go to table, and I want 10 spaces for each test. 
And then I'm going to add another one for like the labels. So we want 11 rows and three columns. Before I move this around, I'm going to click up here in the more section where these three dots are. And we're going to go to format options so we can reshape our table. So where it says width, I want it to be about 2.97 inches. And then the height to be 4.61. That's not, you don't have to make it exactly that or around that. Just work on, um, resize it to fit how many sections you have or how many cells you have. Because you might have more or less than I do. All right, so let's highlight this, change the lines to black, and now we're going to move it up. I do want it closer to the right side or towards that middle vertical line because on the edges here, we're going to put our subject labels. All right, that looks good. Let me resize the um, font and see if that makes our table look a little bit different. So at the top, I know I want it to be for Dana, and we're going to make it 10. And we're going to center it, start those labels, and put them in the middle. So I'm going to type in test. Oh, we want it to be bold. Test. I can zoom in so you can see better. Test score and then the percent sign. All right, everything else I want to be Arial 13. So we're going to put our numbers. And we're going to center them. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so right now my table's not fitting, and it's more so likely because my line here is too um, high, and the one up here is too low. So now I'm going to move it, see if it fits. It fits a little bit better. This line is a little bit short now, so I'm going to just adjust that really quickly. So now we have our table, and now we're going to add in, or we added in our labels. Now we're going to duplicate our table. So I'm going to select the table, and just like I duplicated the lines, I want to hit Command-D or Control-D and move that over so it's lined up and make sure it's where I want it to be. I think they're a little bit too far over, so let's move them just slightly to the left. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so we have our two top subject tables. Let's select our table again. And we're going to hit Command D to duplicate, bring it down so it's lined up. Let's look here. Okay, our rectangle is a little bit too small, so we're just going to adjust that. All right, that's a little bit better. And if you want to make any more adjustments, go right ahead. You can definitely do that. Okay, so... I'm going to take my table on the bottom and then hit Command D again to duplicate. Move it over. And we have our four tables. They're in a, a good spot. So now we're going to add in our labels for each subject. So whatever subjects you want to focus on, you can label them. You're going to label them on, around the edges. And if you teach one subject, you can do multiple class periods if you want. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to the text box and make it here. Change your font. And 
your size. All right, so I'm gonna do mine in all caps, math. That's the opposite of all caps. There we go. And we're going to center it. All right. Let's bring this down. So it's gonna go here around the five or the fifth assessment. And we're gonna rotate that. All right, so there's math. So we're, while it's selected, we're just gonna hit Command D and move that one down for our next subject. Hit Command D again, bring it over to the other side. And then hit Command D one last time for now to get in our last subject over here. So switch it to the subjects that you need. So this one's going to be ELA. This one's going to be science. And this one's going to be social studies. If anything goes longer, you're just going to extend your text box and then adjust the positioning of the text box. Last, we can rotate. My buttons are not working for me today. I think I know why. I was using, when I was working on this earlier, I wasn't using my mouse. I was using the pad on my laptop. So it was easier to maneuver with. Or so I thought. Okay, so we have all our subjects. Those are in place now. So to get our label for our name, let's zoom back out. Going to grab the text box for math, duplicate it, and then move it up here. You can start with the new text box if you want. It really doesn't matter. And we're just going to change the font and the text. So it's going to be name. And we're going to move it over. Then we're going to add a line for them to write their name. And let's zoom in. Singing a song that plays in my Zumba class all the time. <laughs> Songs are in your head now. All right, that's looking good, looking good, looking good. All right, move this in a little bit more. Okay, so let's take the name text box, duplicate that. We're going to move that over. Ooh, my computer's going so because I'm recording it. This is what happens when I like do a screen record, unfortunately. But it's working enough. Hopefully you're getting the point. You're able to do this on your own. Okay, so where it says name, we're going to just switch that to data tracker so we know what this is. Or you can even put assessment data tracker or if you want to put the school year, if you want to put your class period, whatever. Or you can leave this place, this space blank. I just like headings. All right, and then we're going to bring it down. Okay, there it is. There's your data tracker. Again, please adjust it based on what's going on in your classroom, at your school. If you have to record or document data for your administration and they have certain requirements, please adjust it based on those requirements. But I wanted you to 
see how you can set it up online yourself. You can type that you can multiply or duplicate these pages and type this in online if you want, or like I like to, you can print it out. You would just go over to file and then hit download and click on PDF document and your data tracker will come up as a PDF. Okay. So again, this isn't the only thing you should be tracking with your students. You might want to go into standards or specific skills that they're working on, but this is one way that you can track their progress throughout the school year. So I hope this tutorial helped you. Go ahead and watch one of these next videos to get even more help.